Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, SpaceX recycles and makes history again. FAA certifies new Mooney Ultras. Racing aircraft hot stuff won't be racing for a while. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's March 31st and this is Airborne Unlimited. To the continuing amazement of the aerospace world, Elon Musk's SpaceX crew have raised the space age bar yet again. This time, successfully relaunching and relanding a previously used Falcon 9 first stage. The Falcon 9 booster, which previously flew in April 2016, launched from the Kennedy Space Center at 1827 Eastern Daylight Time to fulfill the SES-10 mission and put a communications satellite into orbit for Luxembourg-based SES-SA. The flawless on-time launch allowed SpaceX to deliver SES-10 to a geostationary transfer orbit. Even more exciting and shortly thereafter, the reused first stage returned to the Atlantic Ocean landing on the drone ship safely and apparently right on target. Elon Musk commented seconds after the Falcon 9 first stage returned to a soft landing on an ocean-going drone ship named Of Course I Still Love You, noting this is going to be ultimately a huge revelation in spaceflight. It's been 15 years to get to this point. Consistent reusability of the Falcon 9 first stages could strip as much as 30% from the cost of the 60 plus million dollar launches. Musk hopes that first stage boosters could be reused as much as 10 times with refurbishment and up to 100 times with more aggressive overhaul procedures. The FAA has granted certification to the two latest aircraft from Mooney International Corporation, the M20U Ovation Ultra and the M20V Acclaim Ultra. This act marked the end of a year-long certification process and an affirmation of the company's resurgent and market presence. Both the newly designed Mooney Acclaim and Ovation Ultras will feature a host of improvements, including larger and wider pilot and co-pilot entry doors, the latest Garmin NXi avionics, a composite wrapped cabin for a quieter ride, and a stunning clean sheet interior design, setting a new standard for the class. With a speed of 242 knots, the new Acclaim Ultra will continue Mooney's heritage of building the fastest production piston engine aircraft in the world. First deliveries of the new Ultras will begin almost immediately, and the company initially plans to build just 50 units in 2017, so order books are reportedly beginning to fill. The fully certified Acclaim Ultra will make its first public appearance at Sudden Fun. After the break, Hot Stuff will not be returning to racing anytime soon. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, the new AMA drone report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The iconic World Cup winner, Formula One air racer Hot Stuff, flown by Tom Richard, will not be participating in the 2017 Reno Air Races or the Air Race One World Cup in Thailand. As airborne viewers well know, Hot Stuff was involved in a runway accident where it was struck from behind by another racer during the national championship final on September 18, 2016. A little-known insurance clause has put a stop to the intended repairs, as the liability insurance participants must purchase does not cover damage to the other participants' aircraft. The only way to have insurance cover on an aircraft during an air racing event is to purchase very expensive hull insurance for your own aircraft. That way, if someone else damages it, there is coverage. With no budget for repairs for 2017, they will try to bring the aircraft back to the circuit as soon as possible. Until then, the aircraft will be on display in its damaged condition at Warbird Adventures in Kissimmee, Florida. 
Many have asked if they plan to pursue legal actions against the entities involved, and their answer is no. Under no circumstances would we jeopardize the future of another race team, the class or the venue by tying them up in the court without proper insurance coverage. Hot Stuff will return in due course. It's Friday and that means it's time for a and CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. Wherever a and goes, a and Jim Campbell notices that there are those in the aviation business who can communicate how vital they are to the industry and how innovative their efforts are, and those who can't or won't. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Laura, and hi, folks. I want to talk about something that I brought up again and again, and yet at the same time, I feel a need to bring it up well again and again, and that's my message about messaging. We've been to a number of trade shows in the last couple of weeks, five in all in the last month and a half or so, from everything from model aviation to the very uh, pinnacle of aviation technology, the FAUAS Symposium, uh, AEA, uh, Heli Expo, and so forth. And the thing that bothers me the most is there's these great companies with great information, great technology, and lots and lots of news who don't seem to know how to get that news out. And it's not just a matter of news, but communicating what they're doing, who they are, how they're doing it, and how that affects aviation. Folks, aviation is not in the best of shape. Everybody knows this. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for it. We've had a bad economy. We've had uh, two administrations or two administrations worth of uh, anti-aviation activity and some activity possibly from this one that isn't going to help us out a whole lot more either. Financially, the, co- the country's been kind of all over the place, especially as far as aircraft concerned. And we can find all these excuses. But my question is this. How many percentage points are good messaging good press activities, uh, good PR worth. I went to a recent very high-tech event, 150 or so exhibitors at the event. They had this marvelous press room staffed uh, during the entire time, and basically three or four press releases showed up the entire time. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, paper press releases are quite passe, but it's not a bad place to start. There still weren't a whole lot of electronic releases on top of it, but for an event that we know made a lot of news because we reported on it by digging it up by having to go get it ourselves that there was an awful lot that could be done and among the people we talked to and the conversations we had so much more was revealed as a function of news folks we got to get our act together we have great messages great stories great news to tell but it isn't heard if it isn't transmitted um, I know this is a weird message from here when we could be talking about what's happening at Santa Monica or what the FAA has done this time or that time. And believe me, next week we'll get right back to it. But for right now, we can do so much better. We can better ourselves simply by presenting a professional, profound, active, innovative image that reflects this industry as it is. Innovative, proud, exciting, going forward, and with a great future so long as we tell people about it. Think about it. We'll have a lot more to say about this. We've got some ideas about how to do some tutelage in the future. And yeah, we're going to get on that. So think about your message. Think about your news. Think about what you want people to know about you. For the Air News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, thinking about messaging. After these messages, Hilton Software gets major contract. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics personal jet kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under hundred k Add instruments, upholstery, and paint and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call 
around the patch. Hilton Software has been awarded a prime contract by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency to provide multi-platform worldwide mobile aeronautical solutions. The single award and definite delivery requirements contract has a total anticipated period of performance of five years and a total contract value of $17 million. Bearhawk Aircraft has disclosed that its Bearhawk line of utility, transport, and recreational aircraft are now flying on five continents. The Barrows Bearhawk was originally conceived and first built in the mid-90s in Virginia. Bearhawk aircraft are now operating globally through an expansive network of builders. Three models are offered in both plans, and a kit form for amateur aircraft builders. Orbital ATK and NASA have donated a set of flight-worthy solid rocket boosters from the Space Shuttle program to the California Science Center to display. The goal for this exhibit is to preserve and display the only existing full stack of genuine solid rocket boosters, orbiter, and external tank for Endeavor's ultimate display in a vertical position in the future Samuel Oshkin Air and Space Center. New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu has declared March 2017 General Aviation Appreciation Month. The economic output of general aviation in New Hampshire is over $1 billion annually. The proclamation reads, According to the New Hampshire Department of Transportation, there are 118 registered airports throughout the state, and one out of every 1,000 workers in New Hampshire are employed in the aerospace and aviation industry a significant economic impact on the state. Jinray Wang has been selected by Acting Administrator Robert Lightfoot as NASA's Associate Administrator for the Office of Communications. Wang joins NASA with more than a decade of experience at the highest levels of state and federal government in public legislative and media affairs, both domestically and internationally. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Senator Jim Inhofe, member of the U.S. Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation, member of the Senate General Aviation Caucus, and CFI with more than 11,000 flight hours, has introduced S-755, the Fairness for Pilots Act, which broadens protection for general aviation pilots provided by Inhofe's Pilots Bill of Rights which was signed into law in 2012. The Pilots' Bill of Rights and the implementation of third-class medical reform have been great victories for the general aviation community, addressing concerns brought to my attention by pilots across the country, Inhofe said. There remains more work to be done. Building on my past efforts, the Fairness for Pilots Act increases due process protection for pilots, ensures greater transparency in dealing with FAA, and reduces unnecessary bureaucratic barriers preventing pilots from flying. I look forward to working with my colleagues in the Senate and the general aviation community to get this bill through Congress and enacted into law. Jack J. Pelton, chairman and CEO of the Experimental Aircraft Association, said, quote, We greatly appreciate Senator Inhofe's effort on behalf of general aviation pilots with the introduction of the Fairness for Pilots Act. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend and see you Monday.